Cotton, I have a message from the guild. What is it? Well, don't just stand there. Read it to me. Uh, my job was just to deliver the- I said read it to me. Mr. Game Hunter, given your expertise on the subject, the guild would like to hire you to create a ranking of small monsters. Oh, that's interesting. I do, of course, have my preferences. Based on how much of a threat yes, they pose. Yes, I, I do. I do think I would like the guild to know which ones I prefer. Uh, sire, I, I believe they want them ranked by their difficulty. I'll do it! All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are here for one reason and one reason only. To talk about the true monsters in both the new world and the old, and which ones I personally adore and despise. Though I'm not sure which are at the top of each list, to be honest. Maybe if I sleep on it. Kelby, the immortal deer that grant us ancient potions. Slagtoth. I, I just love their smushy faces. Genprey, and all of their quartet-like action. Give him two lips like roses in clothes. Remobra, with their angry spirit! Yeah, yeah, no! Gastodon, their manes, they, they may be glorious, but their incessant invasion of my privacy? Ah, not acceptable! Noyos! They literally summoned the devil! Oh, God! What a night! Those dreams, they felt so real. Real enough, I might even call them honorable and dishonorable mentions. It's a shame they didn't make the proper list, though. Well, I guess it's time for me to do this properly. <coughs> Fifth worst! Me links. My time with these little guys may be limited, but the pain and anger that they make me feel is absolutely not! Give me my goddamn item back, you son of a gammoth hoof! They may fit in a very interesting spot in the lore of our world, as they are one of the many Linnean races, but just the sheer fact that they take things that I have spent either my precious time gathering, or my heart and zenny purchasing, makes me have this deep-seated hatred for these dastardly little creatures! Fifth best, Gargwa. Something you'll learn about me very quickly is that I have a strange fascination with things that are strangely shaped or sized, and this round furry chicken hits the spot stronger than an undersized mug of tea! God, I love unnaturally tiny things! And then on top of their shape, they make these fantastic sounds! When you hit them for whatever reason that you would choose to take your anger out on these mostly innocent creatures, they drop eggs for you! And who doesn't like a creature that essentially shoots out eggs on demand? They're silly, they're incredibly ridiculous, but they fit the world we live in, and they are one of those creatures that makes me happy just to pass on my way to my actual target. Fourth worst. Bullfango. I know, I know, I fucking know! How is this li- ah! Sack of anger, not die on the list, because most people I think would agree that he should be right the hell up at the top. But the one thing that is keeping this fiery little wrecking ball where he is is that he's just sort of that. He may be the no yeah, extremely annoying. All he does do at the end of the day is charge at you. You can see him coming. You can dodge him. You know exactly what is. Yeah, Plan is so you know how to deal with him. Even though 90% 90, 90 of the time you're gone up and fango, it'll leave you hating your life and his fourth best. Aptonoth. These guys are the underrepresented little guy underdogs of the West and the East, the North and the South. They are everywhere, literally everywhere. Every Monster Hunter game that has ever existed has had Aptonoth because they are the OG and they deserve it. The Aptonoth are essentially a cross between a Stegosaurus and a cow. And while I would never want to drink their milk, I think that they are one of the best background creatures in an open world type game ever. They do their job. For the most part, they remain unnoticed. Yet anyone who has played a Monster Hunter game would recognize one passing it on the street. And everyone else would think it was weird as fuck and freak out. 
Of course, the Aptonoth do personally hold a special place in my heart, as the Tempid Aptonoth was what gave me my big break in the small game hunting circuit. <gasps> But regardless of that, they deserve this spot and to be on this list. And now for a message from our sponsors. Ever wanted to be more than what you are? Looking to experience a real physical challenge without any real danger? Learn to hunt monsters today at Con Dinosaur's We Kill Monsters Dead Academy. I've been one of Mr. Dinosaur's students for a number of months now. And if I'm honest, he taught me a lot of things. I don't think anyone should not come here. It is a great way to spend your zenny, and if I wasn't already tied into a three-year contract, I would sign up to stay even longer. Learn how to hunt today! Once your contract is signed, you have the obligation to do whatever Cotton tells you. No refunds, no returns, no quitting, no leaving, no eating food, the Cotton says you can't. What's that? Why does... Why does my life have commercials? <laughs> ah! Anyways, I'll deal with that later. Back to my list. Third worst. Cephalos! This... Ah! Little Richard of a creature spends his time between skulking around under the sand where it is almost impossible to hit him and popping up from the sand just long enough to interrupt whatever the hell you were doing. The book Fango was dropped off the list a little before this because he just interrupts you. As annoying as it is, he just does that. But at least when he is not charging you, he stands near you in a position vulnerable to you killing him. This motherfucker will get the hell away from you and hide in a way where you may be able to see him coming, you may not. But there is a slim chance you will be able to do anything to stop him from popping on up out of the sand and hitting you again. Third best. The Mufa. I have trouble agreeing with the guild's classification of the Mufa as any type of monster. They're a sheep. Sure, they're just a sheep. But they're sheep that you can gather materials you'd need from them without killing. Oh god, I'm so sorry! Which is always a plus with things that are just this cute! And above that, you can pet them in the village! Wait, wait, that's not it! You don't just pet it! You give this cute little sheepy thing a kiss! Mwah! And every part of it is great, and if, th th if that wasn't enough, you get a little Mufi to follow you around that sleeps with you in your bed! And maybe it isn't the coolest thing in the world, but it's just so cute! Second worst. This cunt, you motherfucker! This guy spends his days and nights thinking about how he could possibly fuck you over even harder than he already does. As if it wasn't enough for him to ram his tiny little butt into you as often as tiny little legs will let him when he... Yeah, eventually decides that he wants a break, he'll make a massive effort to make your current hunt harder just because he can. Can't you will jump right up and sit on one of the body parts of whatever monster you happen to be fighting and while it recharges its little batteries of anger, it will provide an actual armored shell to whatever part of the monster it has attached. Considering some monsters only have one particular, particularly weak spot for you to hit, if it can't you choose to yeah, take that! If it can't you choose to yeah, if it can't you choose to shove itself there, then your fight will progress as an absolute crawl, and you just have to yeah, stare at him while he has this tiny little yeah, evil grin going on under his hard shelly exterior! <laughs> Second best, the Shamos. As an individual, these guys are maybe a little bit unimpressive. They are visually extremely slick, and personally I love the color scheme, which is even better when you consider the colors of the coral highlands where they reside. The lights that reflect off of their scales manage to make them look even more beautiful. If you see them in the night in the coral highlands, it's one of the greatest sights. And I have so much to say about them, and we haven't even started about actually fighting them yet, or any of their mechanics. The cool thing about fighting a Shamos is simply how their pack mentality works. When one feels threatened, they will call on more, and more, and more, and more, and you can end up actually fighting nearly 20 Shamos at once if you get lucky and they manage to actually call hey, each other properly, because sometimes they just really suck at it. Their individual beauty, combined with the fact that they can actually become a somewhat threatening enemy when they coalesce into these massive numbers, is exactly what puts them in the number two spot for me. Candy, you've been with me since the start, and you rarely ever actually talk to me. Not to mention expressing your opinion. 
So, I want to know, what what is your favorite small monster? Mine? Well, to be honest, I sort of identify with the other Linians. Alright, that makes sense. But there's one Linian race that I sort of have a respect for that even I don't understand. They live by their own code, oh, feeding no. off the land, and doing nothing but dancing and killing all day! I My sweat. favorite small don't monster the is say. the Gajalakas! Motherfucker, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen! The worst! The motherfucking Gajalakas! First off, these little cat creatures indigenous to the new world are ranged! And if you thought shoving something charged at you is annoying, just wait until it can snipe you from halfway across the zone! But Honestly, the most interesting thing about them is that they can use little status dots or even throw barrel bombs at either you or any monster in the zone. Of course, when they apply a free status to the monster, it feels like you've won some sort of crazy lottery that you didn't even buy a ticket for. But then conversely, the second you see that monster in front of you get paralyzed, you probably just got shot by a paralysis dart yourself, and instead of capitalizing on a paralysis against your prey, you just had a very unfortunate yet intimate experience. And he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and he said, what the hell, dude, why am I paralyzed? And I said, I'm sorry about the situation, but I'm also paralyzed. And he said, why don't you deal with this? I thought you were the small game hunter. And I said, I'm trying to, but the Gajalaka won't die. No matter what I try, they always just dig away! And I know, I know, I know that they'll come back another day! Ah, honestly, that's the most frustrating part about the Gajalaka! The fact that you cannot kill them! They just dig away and leave you a supply item, and it leaves you sitting there with this urge to kill anything that moves to take out your anger about a creature that just won't die! The best! Zamite! There is something special about these guys, and maybe it is the little edgy meme lord inside of me, but I like sharks. I especially like sharks that are mixed with dinosaurs and have amphibian legs. And on top of that, they have an awesome mechanic and an awesome story. If you let a Zamite bite you, then they will grab fucking hold of you, and if you don't knock them off by rolling, and who would want to knock them off is they are cute little sharks! <laughs> And even though their bite hurts like all yeah, fucking hell, it is still worth letting this happen to see this interaction at least once. If they sit there biting you long enough, they will suck your blood and eventually they will grow and become bigger and bigger until they are almost the size of ah, an actual shark, which is awesome. It makes them more threatening as a small monster as the gain in size simply makes them have an easier time hitting you. And as if all of these wonderful interactions and just descriptions of their existence wasn't enough, they provide me with one of the most justified small game hunts there is. An unchecked Zamite will eventually grow into a Zamtrios, an extremely threatening shark-like creature that is not in any way derpy and cute. Hello! In order to protect the people of this great land, my recommendation to the guild is that we do our best to keep the Zamite population in check, making sure that we do not let enough of them reach adulthood at any one time to pose any proper threat to any of our settlements. Cotton, I need to talk to you. Uh, what is it, Candy? I, I'm leaving to become a Gajalaka. Candy! Candy, take that off right now! Candy, you signed a contract! Oh shit, nothing. You were like a brother to me, Candy! Oh god, please no, don't do this speech, I'll come back if you don't say- You were supposed to bring balance to the small monsters, not join them! God damn it, fine! Be no, just out of pull at my heartstrings! I would never leave you, Cotton, sir! Please forgive me! It's alright, Candy, it's already been forgotten. But if you ever try to leave me again, I'll show you exactly what I did to Oliver to make him go away! Oh no. Oh yes, the show! Um, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my top five best and worst small monsters in all of Monster Hunter. I hope you learned something today, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, stay sweet.